What's going on guys? Welcome to Rob's house. It's our first joyride dragon run. I don't even know what we're doing today, but we're meeting up with uh, some of the guys locally. We're rolling down to the hub to meet up with our other friend, Jamie. Spoiler alert, today I get to ride in a Gen 5 Viper for the first time, so I'm super excited. Let's get rolling. I mean, I'm the odd man out. The odd man out. Porsche, 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 BMW, America. So we're still waiting on Jamie, he's late, but the rest of us are here. Got the uh, a lot of the usual players here. A couple Porsches, M5, the ZR1 of course, Bivens car, my car, the Roush. Still waiting on the new hood for the Roush. Video coming soon on that. Taylor's GT3. Dan just treated his other Porsche and got another Porsche, so. Here's his 911 Turbo S. I don't even know what these things are called. They all, the model numbers confuse me on these things. 911 Turbo S, that's what this is. Dave's car, Lexus, and then Matt's car. Matt's brave today, top down. It's like 35 degrees out, it's really cold. So I'm surprised that, you know, hence my huge beard and not, you know, cutting my hair and stuff because it's been pretty cold. And on that note, I think it's time to get the drone in the air. Okay, so Jamie arrived. He's over there. With the Viper. Full race car today. New wrap. This thing looks good. Check him out on Instagram, at Venomous Viper. That's one of the sponsors on the rear windshield there. New wrap looking fresh. He has two sets of wheels for this car. Um, he has another set that he's getting powder coated bronze, which should match with the brown uh, portions of the woodland camo pretty well. So should be pretty sweet. That's, that's a great way to think bro, about that's it. that's exactly what it looks like. Holy shit. Dude, it's crazy, like, because the C7 is, like, kind of wow. cramped, but this thing just takes it to a new level. I feel like it's a woman's pelvis. Like, look at that, bro. There's, just, yeah, just there's the humps much. and the beautiful haunches right there. Look at that. There's not much visibility out of this thing. No. I, it's not. Oh, he's got the carbon wheel. I didn't even know he had that. Yeah, that's gorgeous. That looks sick. Wow, bro. I can feel myself getting stronger, more American. I like the Viper floor mats. Oh, this is clever. Oh, nice. Perfect. That's like a good spot for it, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good spot. Oh, man. That's... <laughs> the sills are pretty wide, too. Oh, it's just the light. There's Joey. That is really <laughs> loud, dude. <laughs> what does it say? Uh, get out of the way. Yeah. Joey wasn't kidding about those mid pipes, dude. That really That's exactly what I was saying. I was like, I thought the C7 was tight. No. This thing is like. It's a cockpit. Oh my it god. <laughs> like, like climb in it. Dude, this is like Yeah, you gotta step up over. Yeah. It's like the old C4s. You gotta Dude, step up yeah, over. Yeah, I was gonna say it does it's probably not coming through on camera real well, it's except like if you look at my leg, this. but it's, it's like there's a lot C4. here. There's a lot of like door sill here to climb over to get in this thing. Oh man. Bro, so look down, you're looking right down here scary. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah, I've driven an SRT 10, like a Gen 4. There. And it looks pretty similar from the cockpit, but yeah, there's like no windshield in these things at all. It's like that thing is that's it. That, that's all. You, that, actually, this is where, if I lean back a little, this is about where my head would sit. So on camera, you can see kind of what it would look like to drive this thing. <laughs> I like this wheel a lot. He has. <laughs> Right, guys so unfortunately i had to stop filming uh it's actually the next day now but i just wanted to recap what happened yesterday so we had a little bit of a series of unfortunate events so first of all when we left off we were at the hub and we were getting ready to go to lunch which we were going to go to 
a restaurant we like that's on the other side of the dragon. So we had to drive through the dragon, so we did that. Pretty chill drive, roads are cold. You know, we weren't pushing it too hard. Uh, so I was in the Mustang, obviously, because I don't have the Corvette right now, which I will explain why in a later video, we're doing some stuff to the Corvette, but that'll be coming later. And everyone else was in Porsches, basically. <laughs> and uh, so I couldn't really keep up as well as they could. I didn't want to push that hard either. Uh, it's It was like cold out. I'm on all season tires. Like this car is just not going to keep up with the Porsche. So I wasn't even tr trying to keep up with them. Long story short, I roll past Taylor in the black GT3. And I was like, oh, at first I thought he was waiting for me because when I rolled up to him, I saw his lady get back in the car. So I thought like, okay, I guess he was waiting for me. I come around like one or two more turns and I see the rest of the guys. And as I'm going to like pull over, everyone kind of gets back in their cars and goes. So I'm like, oh, okay, they were just waiting for us to catch up, whatever. Turns out that's not what happened. So once we got to the end of the drag and everything, everyone, everyone pulled over and Taylor's car had a major, major issue. So the original plan was to go to lunch, which it ended up at the place that we were going to was closed. So that's, that stunk. And then afterward, we were gonna do some, uh, everyone was planning on going home for a little bit uh, and then meeting back up later for, for dinner. Uh, so Jamie and I were gonna go out and do some filming and drive and uh, you know, he was gonna take me for a ride in the Viper. I was gonna do some more drone footage and stuff like that. So I have to postpone that for another day. Taylor's car had a huge, huge issue. So Taylor had taken his car to get serviced at Porsche. Uh, and he, he had gotten the car back like three days before we went on that drive. So he really hadn't, hadn't driven it at all because he'd been working all week. Well, all they, were, all they were doing there was doing a servicing and then they lowered his car for him a little bit. Pretty routine stuff, nothing, uh, nothing crazy. I'm pretty sure the servicing was just like an oil change and, and whatever, uh, nothing out of the ordinary. And, and like I said, lowering the car. Well, the problem is when they, when they reinstalled the wheels, they actually reinstalled them incorrectly. Now, a Porsche GT3 has a center locking wheel. So unlike the wheels that most people are used to with five bolts, instead it has studs in the back. Uh, I think it's five of them. And the wheel slides onto those studs and then it has a big giant one bolt center lock, basically, which you torque down. Now, on stock Porsche wheels, you can't mess that up because there's only like one set of holes basically, or one size hole. Taylor has Brixton forged aftermarket wheels. Now, those wheels have some weight reduction cutouts. Uh, like on most wheels, the, the basically like trapezoid shape cutouts in the hub just to lighten them up because you don't need that entire hub to be solid aluminum. So the way the Brixton Forge wheels go is they, they, have a, they have a small hole, which is like a stud hole, then they have trapezoid for weight reduction, stud hole, trapezoid for weight reduction, etc. So when you put them on, you have to make sure that you line up the proper holes. The stud holes are smaller than these weight reduction holes. The dealership didn't do that. They actually just slid the wheel on, didn't pay attention to how they were aligning it, and the studs were actually sitting in the weight reduction holes. Now, as you can imagine, this is a problem because even with the center lock, those studs aren't snug in there. The wheel can move around a little bit. Long story short, as we're driving throughout the day, Taylor's wheels loosened up, both of them. What he could, from what he could feel, it was definitely both the rear wheels. We're not sure if the fronts are messed up too. Kind of hypothesized this when we were, after, after it had happened, we pulled over, you know, and he was like, I'm getting this, this crazy noise from my car, the whole, the whole back end shaking. I don't know what's going on, but something's wrong. Something's really wrong. And at first he thought maybe it's a snapped axle, right? So he was like, all right, well, let me just limp it home, right? Because if it's a snap axle, like you can limp the car home, right? It's not gonna be that sketchy. As, and he's figuring, well, as long as I don't drive fast, right? The axle's not gonna be like hitting stuff, so whatever. Well, long story short, it gets worse and worse and worse on his way home. He gets home, he jacks the car up, there was so much damage by the time that he got home and this is how the wheel was sitting. Right, so obviously the wheel's not supposed to be just clanking around like that. That's what the center lock still installed. So the center lock was backing itself out too because the wheel wasn't, wasn't snug on those studs to begin with. Now, the unfortunate part about this as, to, as goes with the, uh, with the title of the video is that set of wheels cost him 10 grand. Those wheels are $2,500 a piece. 
they took 16 weeks for it. The, they were crazy back up from COVID and stuff. So they had like a whole list of orders and he waited forever to get these wheels and they're destroyed. So here's just some photos as I'm talking of, of the damage. Uh, he sent me some photos after he had uh, pulled the one wheel off just to kind of assess what happened. As you can see, there's, there's damage everywhere. The, the weight reduction pockets are not only chewed out like side to side, the studs actually dug in deeper through the hub because since the wheel started wobbling on the studs, right, it starts clanking around. There's also damage to the hub, as you can see, that whole ring around the hub. I'm sure the studs are damaged too. I can't imagine that they were able to take that repeated uh, impact from clanking around like that. Uh, the center locks, he was telling me that the center lock is apparently broken into three pieces. Uh, so his, his center locks are completely destroyed. So basically his car needs new wheel hubs, new center locks, and new wheels. Now the wheel hubs and center locks are not cheap. I mean, they're, you know, a couple hundred dollars per item, right? So that adds up to a couple grand, but the wheels are really expensive. So on for, and on top of that, even if Porsche pays to replace all of this stuff, which, you know, obviously we're hoping that they do, it took 16 weeks for him to get those wheels. So his car's down now for potentially over three months. So I, I don't, I'm not sure what he's going to do to get the car back up for the summer. I'm not sure if there's a way that he can expedite a uh, replacement set or something. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he figures that out. As I'm filming this, I don't have any more information. Uh, it's Sunday right now. We were, this was a Saturday drive. So it's Sunday now. I know he's going to call Porsche tomorrow and, you know, kind of, kind of get more information about that. But I just wanted to give you guys an update as to like, you know, I started this video all excited, like, oh, I'm going to have so much content. And, you know, I started, started off the video, like pretty excited. And we were going to do some Viper stuff and whatever. And then that ended up not happening because once his wheels started having problems, we all followed him home you know, so that he could limp it home. And the, the other thing about if you're not from Eastern Tennessee, if you're not from the area that I'm from, I know I have, you know, people that watch my channel from all over, which is awesome. Up there in the gap in the mountains, so the Tale of the Dragon takes you through a mountain, basically. There's no cell service out there <laughs> at all. <laughs> so it's hard enough to even like get a tow truck out there if you call a tow truck, but even calling the tow truck is a challenge because you basically have to find a place with Wi-Fi and use Wi-Fi calling to make a, a call because there is, no cell reception. I'm not even talking like there's no LTE, but you can make a phone call. Like there's nothing. It's completely dead. Phones like no service, no bars, the entire area. Basically we're all the way deep into the mountains <laughs> going to the place that we were going to eat, which that place probably did have Wi-Fi, but it was closed. So we had no cell signal and we, he, he had to limp the car all the way back through the gap basically just to get to a place where we even had signal. And we don't live that far from the beginning of the gap. So it's like once you're out there, you know, he, he was able to limp the car all the way home, fortunately. But if we, if we had needed to call a tow truck, it would have been a disaster. We would have had to find a place to leave his car, you know, on the side of the road or something, which is not desirable for obvious reasons. And then someone would have had to give him a ride to back when we can get cell reception, call a tow truck, wait however long that takes, coordinate with them so he can go back with them and help them load the car onto the, onto the, to the flatbed or whatever. It would have been a nightmare. So fortunately he got home safely. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. Fortunately, the wheel didn't fall off. That actually would be a possibility. In hindsight, we know that now. Uh, so it ended up being a lot worse than a broken axle. So anyway, um, you know, pay attention when you guys are doing your repairs. You know, I do a lot of uh, do it yourself stuff on the channel and I try to give you guys as much guidance as I can because little stuff like this, little mistakes, little oversights can cause huge catastrophic failures that can be really, really dangerous on the road too. So hopefully everything works out with this car. I mean, you know, the parts can be replaced, you know, it didn't cause an accident, which is uh, for, you know, trying to, trying to look on the bright side, trying to look at the glass half full, right? No, nobody was hurt, uh, nothing super terrible happened, but, but it could have. So that's how our day ended. Uh, I will, uh, I will definitely get Viper footage this season at some point. Jamie's a good friend of mine. Uh, he's been, he's been coming up this way a lot to, to hit the gap with us and, or to just like hang out and whatever. So, uh, he's been around. I'm sure the Viper will be up, uh, plenty. He just got that new camo wrap installed over the winter. Uh, we'll see more of that car on the channel because that car is so sweet. So definitely want to get some footage of that. Some more drone footage. I'd like to get some in-cabin footage. Uh, that thing's just a beast. I've always been a huge Viper fan. So, uh, and that's something that you, something that you don't see very much. So I, I would like to 
just, I think that would just be some like entertaining content. But I got I got some mods planned uh, coming up on both cars. Um, I also did just like some little bits, like uh, got some floor mats in here, some of these nice diamond stitch floor mats that come up the side, so that looks nice and clean. Uh, I did put an overlay on the center console the other day, so the center console now has, this is real carbon fiber, this is not a sticker. Uh, it's an overlay piece. This is the only overlay overlay piece in the car, the center console. You guys remember me installing this is this is carbon fiber. As you guys know, this is my daily driver, so I try not to mess with it too, too much mechanically. Um, if anything, I just want to do little stuff like we did the phase two supercharger kit, which unfortunately didn't go as planned, but you know. Anyway, I got some, some more stuff planned for this car. And in a couple weeks, the Corvette's gonna be back. There's, I'm gonna do a big video on that, big stuff happening. Uh, a lot of mods happening in the Corvette. Uh, so stay tuned for that. I appreciate your support. Everyone who's been watching, all the new subs, thank you guys. Channel's been growing. The channel grew all year last year in 2020. 2021 is gonna be an even better year. I'm super excited about it. I've really been enjoying doing these videos. So as usual, I hope this video was entertaining. I'll see you guys next time. Reach for the stars, cause we're